And I think the, the most like disturbing thing, this guy felt comfortable that he could just shout that out. It's clearly out of bounds. Earlier in the season, we played the Thunder at home, and there was an incident between uh, between Russ and a fan, where some uh, uh, some really ugly things were said towards Russell. I mean, like talking trash or whatever. It's just it just kind of feels like a part of life. Like um, we're on the court, guys are saying stuff all the time, but there's like certain things that are off limits. But it doesn't feel like when it comes to like fans sometimes that like there's this code that. Or like, you know, like this is out of bounds. Like, like I, I like being booed sometimes. Like, I, it's, it's all part of the game. It's part of the emotions of, of competition. But like, there's this line that, like, sh it should be like understood that you don't cross. It, it just shows a lack of respect um, from the fans, um, and really just across all boards because. Just with Russell Westbrook, he's been touched by a fan a couple of times. He's been, you know, they've called him out um, different names, and just just lack lack of respect. Like it's like we're in the zoo almost. You know, just perform, um, don't say anything. Just perform, and it'll be all right. You know, we 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 give you all this amount of money. You know, just shut up and take it. Almost felt like that. You know, I was. Um, bothered by it, you know, just by being a player of the team and somebody being, you know, a, a, a Utah Jazz fan, you know, some, somebody that look up to us and cheer us on during the game, um, for him to be going that route, you know, to, to um, saying, saying something like this, you know, to a, to a player of an opposing team, um, you know, he reflects on us as well. You know, I think, you know, if, if, especially if you say something racially charged, you know, um, the day we, we're not wearing a Utah Jazz jersey, you can say, say to us, or the day we're walking down the streets and something happened, you're going to say the same thing to us, you know. So um, that, that's, that's where it, it, it kind of hit home for me. But I, I definitely think the team took it, um, took it hard, and as they should, and I think they're making the right mm -hmm. steps. And I like to see that the team really, you know, uh, uh, stepped up and said, you know, we're really going to do something big about this because we can't, we can't allow that to happen. I'm appreciative of what they've done. Um, wasn't, you know, this wasn't the first, it may not be the last time, but they finally put, put their feet down. But if she can create some type of change, she's a wealthy woman, she can hop on the phone with 29 other owners and other sports owners and, and, and um, try to hold them accountable. Um, and now that she's put herself out there, I think it's up to the players to hold the organization accountable. I think the best part was they wasted no time either. You know, I think as soon as they got the information that they needed to, they put a ban on this man. And the scary thing is, is, is that people in an arena where we're trying to better ourselves and, and work on our profession is where fans feel the safest that they can mock us or degrade us. And I think that's what hurts the most is that they feel comfortable enough to to say these degrading things in, in a place where we're trying to make something of ourselves and make, make a name for our families and be role models for so many young kids. That's the thing, I think it, it, it goes so much further than just basketball. You know, I mean, you see it on the, on the basketball court um, between fans and players, and, 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 but you look across the country, and in 2019, uh, you know, it seems like people are coming out with, you know, words and, and, and acts of, you know, racism or, or bigotry or whatever it is, and it's becoming more and more. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, it's definitely disturbing. You know, I'm, I'm not being from the U.S., but I've been here long enough that I kind of see the differences and and see the evolution in a way. Um, and it's 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 kind of scary time. You know, I mean, even talking to my children, you know, and and just looking at news and and different things like this. You know, how do you explain? what's going on and, and kind of try to make sense of all that. There's so many layers to this and there's so many issues and there's so many injustices and like, I mean, this has really made me like look myself in the mirror and be like, how do I be better in this, you know? I think for a lot of, like a lot of white people, 
you know, we kind of feel like if we, if we don't say anything wrong and we have this, like, idea of color blindness, right? Like, I don't see color. Like, I, everyone's equal. And, like, as long as we do that, we're not part of the problem. And I think, like, my biggest takeaway in all this is, like, like that is the problem. Like, for me, as a, as a, as a white man, like, like, I get to walk in and out of this conversation as easily as I want to. Like, if I want to address it today, I can. And if I don't feel like doing it tomorrow, I don't really have to. And, like, there's a lot of privileges that I have, but, like, that's kind of towards the top of the list, right? So, like, for me, I've been trying to figure out, like, how do I better engage in this conversation? And what is my role in helping progress? And, uh, you know, me and Todd were talking earlier, like, I don't know exactly what that looks like. But it's important that I'm trying to develop lenses where I'm trying to see things differently than what I have in the past. I think that's a big thing. People don't really, I mean, you can have the most, the, the craziest ideas and you're just comfortable in, th in those and you don't see the whole, you know, aspect of different things and different, how, how what I say might affect somebody else and, and you know, it's, it's hard, it's becoming harder and harder to put yourself in st into somebody else's shoes. And for, you know, a lot of what we see going on, you know, it's just people not really understanding and not really wanting to understand what the other person goes through on a daily, daily basis, you know, as a, as a, the color is different, the, the um, you know, where you live might be different and, and the school that you go to might be different. And I mean, there's so many different layers that makes people just being different in a, in a day to day basis. I think when we see injustice like this, we need to hold each other accountable and not to the point where after the fact of when the racial act or something degrading is going on after being like, oh, I should have did this, but, you know, nipping it in the bud when it happens, like we're all humans and, and this isn't right and we need to learn how to treat each other better and educating people because I remember after it happened, like we were talking about the tweets and I, uh, I, I came in and I, I can't remember exactly what one it was, but where I was, where he said, go, was it go back to where you came from? And you think of, there's kids out here that have all types of internet access and, and they're reading these things and seeing these things and they don't really know what it means because they, they haven't really educated themselves on racial issues and, and all the history and what people from different minorities and races have had to go through to be successful. I'm gonna throw it out there like, being a, a white, male, female is probably not as difficult as being an African American. I mean, there's just some things that you don't have to battle as a Caucasian woman or male that African American females and males have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's being looked at a different way or, or being stopped in a, a, a shopping center because they suspect you because you look like you'd be a, a suspect. I mean, it's just all those things that we have. We have to have this conversation, like Kyle talked about it. He could talk about it today. He cannot talk about it tomorrow. But I think for us, with the platform that we have, like w we need to educate, hold each other accountable, and have these conversations on what this stuff actually means. You talk about white white privilege, and it feels like it's getting to a point like where you, if you bring that up around white people, they're just like, ah, oh, here we go again. All right, roll your eyes and and. There's just like, when you say that to someone, they're like, I've worked really hard. My life hasn't been that easy. Like, why is my life so privileged? Like, there's no, like, we don't have the ability to always see like, like, you know, divorce hits every, every color, right? Uh, economics, like money issues, that hits every single color. Cancer hits every single color. Like there's, there's, there's these issues in the world, like everyone deals with this and no one has this easy life. But there's an and, right, that people of color do have to deal with. Like, they got to deal with cancer and money problems and whatever else, and police brutality, and, you know, all these other things that, that, that I think, like, that, that white people just don't, we just don't really want to go there in our mind, and we're a little bit afraid of it. What do you tell people when they, they say, okay, you know, slavery, Jim Crow era, whatever it was, happened so long ago. Like, what, what, sh what should it be my problem now? I was born 20 years ago, I was born 30 years ago. 
I never did anything. I never insulted a black guy or anything like that. I don't, I'm not going to throw names of politicians, but just in, in America in general, when you look at politics and the policies that are put in place, they're here to benefit the top percent, the top people with money and lobbying and all this. I think in a, in a lot of ways, like people with, when you have some advantages, some privilege, you don't even see it as privilege. It's normal. Like, like pure, everybody, ig pure ignorance. Yeah, and, and then somebody say, oh no, but this is a privilege. Like if we take that away, why would you take it away from me? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's that duality that, yeah, I, wa I want to help, but at the same time, why should I hurt myself helping? That's tough. I mean, it's not for everybody. You know, that's the, you know there has to be a line. You can't be this one day and, you know, change um, when the, the camera start flicking on you. Once you get in it, like, if this is what you want to be, you want to be a better person or you want um, integration all over, then be that person all the time. You know, some people, it is what it is. You know, everybody can't, can't run this race. But for the ones that do, put your all into it. Try to find ways. Um, but for me, history is the key. It's, I mean, it just repeats itself. You know, slavery never really ended, you know. That's crazy to think of because that was what two, three hundred years ago. <coughs> I mean, that's what they say. But uh, I mean, it, it, it just still went, going on today. Yeah, yeah. It just went into the systems, uh, and, and those are the same systems that are in place that keep um, black folks behind. But if you don't educate yourself, you're never going to know that. First time I had a Black Lives Matter conversation with an African American, like I, I came into the conversation thinking I had some kind of an idea of what was going on. And then I stammer and stutter my way through this conversation because he's kind of coming back at me a little bit with what he thinks. And I'm like, wow, like I, I, after that conversation, I'm like, I had no idea what I was talking about. Like I really need to find out, right? Just being in relationship, being in conversation, being in situations where I didn't feel comfortable. Like you gotta like get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right, like once you're able to do that, you get this whole new set of like lenses and eyes for like what's going on in our country today. And then I think once you do that, once you've been educated, like you start to understand. Once you understand, you start to confess and be like, yo man, I didn't know this. I still don't know this. I'm still learning in this. And then you start actually doing something about it. Because I, f I feel like, I feel like there's so much good in our country and so much good in a lot of our, a lot of the people here, that's just not activated. And then this is, it's this big, like intimidating conversation. I'm like, and I don't wanna look like an idiot. And I don't wanna, you know, and, and you have to start, like you gotta be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I think change comes slowly. That's the main thing, you know, so I think, you know, what you doing, Kyle, and, and us talking about it, I think it's in a lot of ways just planting a, a seed, you know. There's no bad time for a conversation like this, you know, and I think especially now, you know, it's, it's necessary in a lot of ways. You know, you look at this guy in, in, in Utah, I'm sure, you know, I mean, he has probably children and all this and, and you know, what to follow, what, what, what is right, what is wrong. You know, you were talking about right and wrong and there's such a gray area. You know, people are certain about what they think, even though it might be contrary of what I think, you know, so I think just to have those voice of kind of middle ground and kind of reason I think it's 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 big I think understanding each other is huge um, with this issue because obviously that guy in that arena obviously had a, a misunderstanding of of what he thought right from wrong is and what he thought was heckling or he maybe he thought he was doing us a, a service as a Utah Jazz by throwing Russ mm -hmm. off his game but mm -hmm. realistically he was hurting all of us, You're you know, and I don't, I drivers. think, yeah, I, I think people need to realize that, like, you may think by degrading someone or saying something is mentally messing them up, but we all know the NBA is a fraternity and, you know, we all are one. Yeah. I think we need to continue doing this and the next step would be, what can we do better after this, you know? Just talking about it is one thing, you know, I, I just don't want people to think like, oh, well, I write a check to, to this organization. and No, but be different. Be, be okay with, like you said, putting your feet in and, and, and fully being in it and, and watching the change happen. I mean, uh, For you, what does that mean, being in? Like, 
jumping in and, and I mean, being, like he said, I mean, if you don't write that check, you need to follow up on it. You need to follow up with the organization, show up at the organization, talk to the kids. Um, we won't see the change. You know, we're only try, like 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 you said, the seeds. Like you try and put the seeds there. We won't. We just want to spark that 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 fire, um, and just keep it going. Um, it, it was sparked, but then it got dimmed. Now it's sparking again with all the, you know the the climate that we live in. Um, so we just gotta get it to to blaze away. I think like change, like you gotta like start small, right? So it's like you start with yourself, right? That's the smallest you can get, is like just in your own self. And then you start with your family and like how you raise your kids and what they grow up thinking is normal, right? Like for their kids, do they, are all their dolls white? Are all the, the, the cartoons they watch white? Are all their teachers white? Are all their coaches white? Are all the voices that come in their head white? You know what's gonna happen if, they happen, if that happens? <clears throat> They're gonna grow up thinking that the world is white. Right? And so it like starts with like your closest circles and you just make sure that like that's good first. We can't be waiting for policy. Like we've been trying to pass laws and policies forever and some of them actually took us in the wrong direction. Correct. Right? And so it's like we gotta take care of ourselves and take care of our own, our own hearts and our own character. Um, and keep on like thinking small with this, I think. Yes, sir. So what do you think, Chabo? Especially, you know, you're not from the States. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely, um, you know, a historical problem with race in America. Um, I see it as well in South Africa. That's where my father is from and, and where my, a lot of my family is. And it's a little bit the same history, you know, of apartheid and segregation and same thing. Uh, but I think here in a lot of ways, I think some of the the, the policies actually are really hurting certain people. Uh, and it's not just black, but it's, it's poor people in general. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, white people, Asian people, whatever, that are poor, you know. And I, I, I think in, la in a lot of ways, you know, it's, it's just, I see a lot of policies that kind of keep the poor poor and, and facilitate for the well off, you know, to keep, keep rising to the top. Um, and that's just the one thing that scares me when I look at it. I say, okay, where is this going? Until you read some books and understand why, you know, black people act the way they act and, and, and treat each other the way they treat each other. And if you don't understand that it comes from a past of, of violence, of slavery, of, of, of uh, not having, you know, um, the same rights in the eyes of the world, you know, and, and, and being angry at that, you know. You're going to look at people and say, oh, well, they're just crazy. No, but there's a reason why, you know, everything is, is the way it is today. Um, and education is key. Um, and, and conversation like this, I think, is key. As I look myself in the mirror and as I look, you know, how I can be better, like, it's all about, like, how do we add more voices to the conversation and voices of all colors, of all races, um, you know, how do we keep on engaging more and more people into this? Because, like, like what we're talking about is right. right. This is what's right. This is what's good. It feels like, like in Salt Lake, like a step was made. I don't know how big a step it is at the end of the day, but there was a step, and there was people that felt responsible. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that it's going to be powerful. I hope it is.